Hey guys, what's up? This is David from Coming Out EW here, and we recently had an Indie World Showcase, probably one of the best ones we've had in a while for Nintendo. Whole bunch of really awesome games, a lot of which dropped the same day they were announced. Either we got a demo or the full playable version on the eShop. There were so many games shown, but I think there were some games that I don't know if I'd rather play on the Switch or on something else. I wanna go through the games that were shown and let you guys know whether you should get it on Switch or if you should try to play it on a different platform. And before we get started, I wanna know what do you think the best game of the show was? Personally, I'm a fan of Garden Story. Comment down below what yours is and let's chat. Supergiant Games has a powerful pedigree under their belts. Both Bastion and Transistor are quality isometric titles that I'd say are gaming essentials, and their third one, Hades, which released in 2018, is no exception. Being a badass fighting gods through demons in the underworld with hella power-ups and whatnot is bound to be for a fun time. Hades has a release date for fall 2020 on the eShop, but you can currently get it on Steam for 25. Roguelike games and the Switch go hand in hand because of the easy re-entry for a quick session on the go, so I would have to say this would be an excellent buy here. Witness the dawning of a new world, where sleep time is no longer downtime. It's where the future is built. A future built by you. Hypnospace. This next game is bound to leave Gen Z in a retro fuel confusion. Hypnospace Outlaw is a time capsule of a game. I tried out the demo. I was born in the 90s. I didn't get to use the internet until really like 2003, 2004, but holy shit. This game hits me something different. The mouse cursor controls feel kind of awkward using a controller. I kind of wish there was a gyro pointer option for it, honestly. The full game drops on the 27th, but if you want to give this game a shot, I'd highly recommend getting it on PC if you can. It'll feel more appropriate. Cutscenes and stylized art directions that make me feel like I'm playing a cartoon or anime are huge draws for me. I haven't looked into it further, but I swear someone who worked on Battle Chef Brigade was on the art team for Spiritfarer. Both of these games just look so good. Looking at the trailer, it looks like there's going to be a lot of heartwarming moments here, like some stuff that might make me cry, and I don't think I'm ready for that. Part platformer, part town builder, Spiritfarer would be a great title to have on the Switch, but also if you have Xbox or PC Game Pass, it also dropped on there the same day, so just letting you know, you got options. Having an aesthetic pull of Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing, and top-down Legend of Zelda titles, Garden Story is on my watch list. It's not dropping until 2021, so that sucks, but if you have a PC, you can download the Autumn Town demo on Steam, which is about 30 minutes long. I played it and I'm hooked. The music is so soothing and I just enjoy the visual style that Picogram brings to the game that makes it look like a higher-end Game Boy Advance title. Honestly, I would play this on whatever. The game looks beautiful on bigger displays and would be perfect for a handheld play on the Switch. Speaking of games that look better on bigger displays, let's talk about Subnautica. This is a game that many a streamer have played through, <coughs> call it Markiplier, and it looks equally breathtaking and terrifying. All those damn note fish in the water. Ugh. Switch ports coming from other consoles usually take a pretty substantial graphical dip. I'm not sure if I want my first dive into the depths to look not as good as it could possibly be. Early 2021 is a wide window to wait, and if that's the case, I'd just sooner go to PC Game Pass or Steam. In the latter half of 2019, Apple Arcade released a subscription-based service that allows you to play full-on titles on your phone, tablet, computer, and even your Apple TV for only $5 a month. Every Apple device owner gets to try a free month, so even if you haven't given a go yet, now is the perfect time to play Takeshi and Hiroshi. Seeing this in the Indie Direct threw me for a loop, but I'm happy for the developers to be able to bring their game to other platforms. Those stop-motion cutscenes and the simple story of a boy trying to entertain his bedridden baby brother is, is so wholesome. It's not a long game, but the price tag of only $8 is totally worth the entry for this one. I love it when developers use gaming as a medium to delve people into their cultures, which otherwise wouldn't get much representation. Raji, an ancient epic, is an action game that's lined with Indian culture, and I love that about it. It's currently 25, and it's got console exclusivity on the Switch right now, so by all means, get this game. Remember when I said I loved games that had art styles like cartoons? Yeah, this one hits good. Bear and Breakfast looks to be a game where you're a bear that owns a bed and breakfast. Some, somehow. Talking to a forest of woodland creatures and making sure that the tourists that pass through are taken care of seems like a pretty interesting gameplay loop. Games like these I feel work really well on the platform, so I'd get this on Switch if I could. Sometimes a game comes out and it just makes you vibe. A short height looks like a PlayStation 1 game, and that's okay. 
I played it a few months back on the Epic Game Store and I couldn't recommend it any harder. As the title suggests, this isn't a long game. I finished it in about 3 hours, but you couldn't spend $8 any better than this. Clear your mind, have a seat, and enjoy the hike. Play this on whatever you can. Debuting for the first time today, Card Shark isn't just a game of poker. It seems like the major gameplay mechanic is you have to actively cheat to finesse your way to the top of a social hierarchy by making men rage quit and kill each other. Conceptual gold, honestly. I want to play yesterday. Give this to me now. Diablo 3 apparently sold really well on Switch, so Torchlight shouldn't do much worse, right? I have nothing to say about this franchise personally. I've heard positive things about 2, so have at it. Sometimes you hear about an indie being made by one person and go, no. One guy? This whole thing? One guy. Yeah. Yeah, they did that. Medical Garden has the first person puzzle prowess akin to Portal and The Witness, and the visual draws something out of a dream. I've played a few hours of this game on Apple Arcade, and it's also on the Epic Game Store, so shout out to the creator for getting this title to more players on the Switch. Branded as a discount Ori on visuals alone, Evergate already has my attention. Puzzle platforming and item manipulation come together seamlessly here. This will make for a good title to play on Switch. Even though it wasn't a sizzle reel and didn't get a lot of time in the spotlight during the showcase, it did say there was a demo, so I checked it out. Unrailed is a sleeper hit of the bunch. It has the chaotic multiplayer energy of the party service industry games like Overcooked, Moving Out, and Tools Up. Scrambling to keep your train on the tracks while also managing resources to keep building the tracks is such a unique experience. Since this is a party game, I'd suggest getting it on the Switch overall. Two geese are more of a pain in the ass than one, so why not add co-op to Untitled Goose Game, right? The hilarity continues. The goose is probably going to be in Smash at any moment, so you might as well play it on the Switch. It's only common sense. And there you have it guys, we ran through all the major announcements at the Indie World Direct that recently happened. If you guys like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Also, comment down below, again, what your favorite game of the whole show was. And also, did you pick up any of these games when they released? Also, make sure if you subscribe, you ring that bell so you know when more videos like this are going live. Can't wait to get more videos out to you guys. See you later.